All right, we are just days away from 2023, and that means we're going to wrap up one of the most chaotic years in politics in recent memory. I spoke with News Nation Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vicara about his biggest takeaways from 2022 and what we can expect from a Republican-controlled House in the year to come. I think, you know, in our business, news we define as the unexpected. And what happened in the midterms election, midterm elections was certainly unexpected. I mean, many people, myself included, thought Republicans were going to sweep to an easy majority in the House of Representatives and perhaps take control of the Senate because President Biden was having a very bad year with inflation, with gas prices, with a whole host of economic problems and headwinds that he was facing. It didn't happen. Uh, Republicans did end up winning the House of Representatives. That's the good news for them. Uh, and there are going to be a lot of repercussions that flow from that. But they only have a five-seat majority in the House. It's going to be very difficult for them to get anything done, not only because of that narrow majority and divisions within the Republican Party among conservatives and moderates, uh, but because the Senate is still controlled by Democrats. Obviously, they did add a seat after the midterms and that runoff in Georgia. Uh, and the White House, obviously, is controlled by President Biden, who has his veto pen, his veto stamp if he wants to use it. Unlikely that any policy priorities are going to come out uh, of the Republican Congress and pass to the president's desk. So that, I think, is the biggest story, the midterms and the surprise there. I would say honorable mentions include the Dobbs decision, the Mississippi abortion case, uh, which was leaked, uh, perhaps unprecedented leak of the Samuel Alito opinion in that decision that ulti ultimately struck down Roe versus Wade across the United States having an enormous impact on American politics heading into those midterms. The Ukraine war, Russia's ongoing uh, invasion that started back in February, uh, and to the surprise of just about everyone across the globe, around the globe, uh, Ukraine fending off that invasion, uh, Russia now on defense in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass and Donetsk. Uh, and inflation. Uh, we've already mentioned it once. Inflation at a 40-year high. Uh, the news just recently uh, for the, the numbers for November uh, show an improving situation, uh, but still difficult uh, in terms of the political repercussions, not to mention what everyday American families are facing around the, around the dinner table and when they go to the grocery store uh, every week. So, Marnie, a whole host of things, big stories on the political front to talk about over the course of last year. Yeah, Marnie. Major, major storylines. You hit all the big ones for us, Mike. All right, talking to about 2023, investigations in the House. That's what we're already hearing that the GOP uh, will be doing in the months ahead. What should we expect in terms of those investigations and what the lower House will be doing um, at the start of the year? I love the way you call the House of Representatives the lower house. A lower, chamber, have... lower chamber. Lower <laughs> chamber. <laughs> well, I mean, even that, having covered it for many years and walking those halls, they don't like to be called the lower anything, uh, to be honest with you. But yes, uh, a big change in the House of Representatives. Republicans taking over, again, a relatively narrow majority, going to be difficult to get any policy priorities passed. But those investigations that you mentioned, uh, the majority means that they will be holding those committee gavels, which means they'll have majorities on the committees, which means they can investigate pretty much anything they want to do. We've already heard a lot about Hunter Biden uh, in recent days and his laptop, uh, his dealings in Ukraine, his dealings in, in China, of course, the president's son. Uh, Republicans are going to be digging into that. We can expect that almost right out of the box. Uh, Anthony Fauci is a, is a favorite uh, uh, let's say, anti-hero of Republicans and many on the right and their supporters. Uh, he's going to co be coming under scrutiny. The origins of COVID, of course, related to Anthony Fauci, the Wuhan lab, whether this came from the so-called gain-of-function research uh, that may or may not have been going on in that Wuhan lab. Uh, the border uh, is something that is uh, pr pretty much cuts across party lines uh, in terms of the voting public. They want to see something done about immigration about the border, about what we've seen uh, in Title 42 uh, unfold over the last days and weeks. So that those are some of the big issues that Republicans are going to be tackling. Um, one other thing I should mention is, you remember President Trump passed the so-called PPP program to help small businesses. Uh, every day brings new revelations about waste, fraud, and abuse within that program. People just ripping off the government, ripping off unemployment insurance as well. So we can expect to see some investigations over that as well. Uh, so Republicans take the House. The good news for Republicans, unclear who's going to be leading the Republican Party at this point, who's going to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, but a number of investigations, uh, a number of politically driven uh, uh, messaging, messaging from Republicans, I think we can expect in terms of policy and passing things. I think they're going to be log at loggerheads uh, with the Senate. Uh, gridlock, government shutdowns, certainly a strong possibility heading into 2023.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.